who? Who knows? Where's the pandem, John? <laughs> They're down already. <laughs> Palestine is made up of pilots and aviation enthusiasts. By this fall, they hope to have the very first air race in the state. This afternoon, the group flew in 11-year-old John Kevin Hill, who is the youngest pilot to fly across the U.S. It's hoped Hill will be the drawing card to help get the race off the ground. Yes, this is a preview of the air race a group of folks in Berryville are hoping to get together. In fact, Dave Lockwood, who came up with the whole idea, says this is just a taste of what's to come. We have a sport, uh, biplanes, a Formula Vs, and the Formula One uh, categories of airplanes. And like I said, we'll have a heat race, and we'll have aerobatics, and we'll have skydiving, we'll have hot air balloons. And getting off to a good start, the group, Wings Over Lake Palestine, imported some local aviation talent who recently made national headlines. Very <laughs> 11-year-old John Kevin Hill of Arlington is the youngest pilot in aviation history to successfully complete a flight across the United States. I'm glad to be home and just that it's all over with. Some 70 people have already pledged their support to making this race happen. Everybody come to the races. <laughs> it's October the 24th and 25th. We'll have uh, three different uh, categories, race planes, and be fast, a lot of action, a lot of fun. See you at the races. The race course has already been approved by the FAA, and the group has been successful in retaining insurance. Now all they need is a major sponsor. With the rate they're going, that seems to be in their reach, because as one pilot put it, the sky's the limit. It's important, it's important to mention that many of the Berryville residents actually have airstrips in their own backyard, so it seems only natural that they're helping to organize this first air race. And now, speaking of weather and flying and all those good things, John asked... Hey.
Ted Dawson, and I'll be your host for the great Texas National Air Race and Air Show. This is the only USARA-sanctioned air race in Texas, and in the years to come, promises to be one of the premier events on the circuit. As you can see, this event has all the excitement and thrills of head-to-head -head competition, along with some of the most spectacular aerial demonstrations and aerobatic acts in the country. We'll talk with the pilots as well as the celebrities. You'll witness two long-standing national records being broken. You'll be there for everything from the classics to the comics, from the drama to the disappointment. So join me, if you would, for one of the fastest growing sports in the world as only Texas can offer. It's the great Texas National Air Race and Air Show. For sheer excitement, nothing beats the thrill of aerobatics, and the best of the best are in Airfare Addison. On this exciting home video presentation, you'll see the most thrilling airshow aerobatics in the world today from vantage points that will put you right in the middle of the action. You'll see the aerial ballet of the International Council of Air Show's Performers of the Year, The French Connection. Hollywood stunt pilot Jim Franklin flying his highly modified Waco Jolly Roger in a hair-raising solo performance, and then with daredevil Johnny Kazian walking the wing. Jan Calmer performing crisp aerobatics right on the deck. The unparalleled grace of Steve Powell flying the sailplane, Miss Express. Craig Hosking in the airplane that will make you look twice. Double Tank, the only aerobatic airplane that lands upside down. And world champion aerobatic pilot Leo Laudenschlager stretching the outside of the performance envelope in the Bud Light Laser 200. Leo says of this tape, this is the excitement, essence, and flavor of the world's greatest air show flying. To order, call 1-800-752-9222, or you can order by mail. Welcome to the great Texas National Air Race and Air Show, coming to you from Lake Palestine in the beautiful piney woods of East Texas. Hi, I'm Ted Dawson. We have lots of exciting aerial action on tap for you today. It all starts with the screaming Formula V qualifying run of Rick Leonard in plane number 22, the Jersey Devil. Obviously, the plane is named after Rick's home state of New Jersey. Let me tell you a little about this class of airplane racing here today. These are Formula V racers. The V stands for Volkswagen. That's right. All these beautiful racers are powered by Volkswagen air-cooled engines, made famous, of course, by those ugly VW Beetles. Rick and most Formula V pilots build their own planes. This sport takes dedication, a love of flying fast, and a strong competitive spirit. And it all seems to be paying off for Rick as he screams past the home pylon at a record-shattering 159.91 miles per hour. That's right, 159.91, an incredible run. U.S. Air Racing Association President Jack Donoska caught up with the new record holder right after his run to find out how the whole thing came together, how he was able to set the new record run here at Lake Palestine in East Texas on our National Air Race and Air Show. Rick, uh, you did a wonderful thing out here. You set a national record for the Formula V's in qualifying. You beat Charlie Terry's old record not by just a few miles an hour, but exceeded it considerably. Would you like to make a few statements about that? It's, a, it's an honor to be able to hold the record, Jack, and certainly to, to have taken the record from somebody like Charlie Terry and to be in the record books with somebody like Steve Whitman is, uh, I'm still a little bit in awe of it. But I think to, uh, to put it in perspective, and uh, it should be noted that this is the first time, as, uh, as you're aware, that we've had a under four kilometer course in a sanctioned race in, in uh, quite a number of years and the race planes have gotten faster and faster in those intervening years. So that's one reason the record went up so much. And who knows, if Charlie had stayed together, maybe he would own the record right now. Okay. Uh, you sound a little modest here. Now, you work very hard on your airplane, so I think we got to give you credit for being a hard worker, and you've put this airplane to the test, and you proved that your hard work has paid off. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll go along with that. Yeah, we, we did do a tremendous amount of work, uh, particularly this winter. You saw the airplane when it first came out in Cleveland in 1985, and it was uh, um, in, in the middle of the pack Correct. airplane. Right. And then we did some work on it last year, and it improved to the point it was in the front of the pack airplane. Um, we tried a revolutionary concept this year. We put a, a tuned exhaust system on it. Um, and we fared the cowl or, or contoured the cowl to both to accommodate that exhaust system and to give us better airflow. Yes, I noticed that. It makes a beautiful sound when it's going through the air. Well, that's one of the side benefits. We did it to get to gain extra power, which we seem to have done, but I think that it also uh, has uh, given the kind of exhaust note that, that seems to 
interest the crowd too. So it's uh, not only a fast airplane now, but it's a it's a much better crowd pleaser than it. It, it surely been. does. It raises some eyebrows when it comes screaming around. As we wait for more Formula V races, the crowd at the Great Texas National Air Race and Air Show is being entertained now by the ghosts of yesterday, the vintage aircraft of the Confederate Air Force. By the way, the Air Force Communications Squadron supplied the sound system for today's event, while other CAF members light up the skies with an exciting pyrotechnic show. These men and women of CAF rebuild the classic warbirds out of love and respect to the past. Today's pilots, Randy Wilson, David Dodd, and Von Olsen, are showing off some top-notch flying. Now, let's just sit back and enjoy some classic aerobatics by Von Olsen. There's something special about these old war birds, and there's something happening right now. The Formula Vs are back on the course. Let's join U.S. Air Racing Association official Jim Velt for his call of the action. Coming down the front straightaway, John Bregar in a commanding lead at this moment, and they're sorting themselves ra out around the number six pylon. It looks like uh, Tom Summers is cut tight in the s inside. No, it's uh, Brian Dempsey. Charlie Terry takes over third. There's a pass, here we go. Now uh, they're cooking. Now he has moved out to a five second lead. John is now five seconds in the lead on that lap. Now you'll notice Rick Leonard is, is flying relatively high and he's creeping up on the others. He's going to trade off that altitude for speed and try to pass them one by one so he's in front at the finish. John, in the meantime, is pulling out a sizable lead. Brian Dempsey is holding second, but Charlie Terry is creeping up behind him. Rick Leonard has already moved into fourth position. Tom Summers is now back in fifth. Brian Dempsey in second place is holding off Charlie Terry for the moment. Charlie's airplane is a little bit faster in the qualifying run, so he's, perhaps Charlie will be able to get around him in the next lap or two. John Bregar in first position so far. Brian Dempsey in second, Charlie Terry in third. And Rick Leonard is really pouring on the coal. You can hear that tunic sauce screaming as he goes by. Tom Summers in fifth. Charlie Terry is moving up and he's apparently gonna be getting close enough for a pass on Brian Dempsey in the next lap or so. Now, Brian Dempsey has moved up one second. He was only four seconds behind uh, John in the uh, Looks like first Charlie's airplane. going to come by. Pushing, pushing for a pass. Of course, he has to pass him on the outside. He cannot pass him on the inside, and he can't go under him. That's correct. Brian Demps Dempsey is holding off Charlie. In the meantime, John Bregar is still in a commanding lead in this race heat. Tom Summers is now dropping well behind. Passing the start-finish line, John Bregar still in first place. Brian Dempsey in second. Rick Leonard is dove and got past Charlie Terry and he's taken over third. And now he's moving up on Brian Dempsey. And he's only five seconds behind. Five seconds behind the lead aircraft, so he's moved up a lot. Rick Leonard is creeping up behind Brian Dempsey. Looks like he's gonna take over second position in a moment here. He's diving for a pass. Will he make it? Yes, he he's will. There's Rick Leonard has now moved up into second position. Brian is third. Charlie Terry seems to be turning inside the course. He may be having a little bit of a problem there. Dead stick. Charlie Ter Terry is making a precautionary landing. The race continues. Ooh. He's okay. He's all right. All right, everyone stay behind the roped off area. Red flag, they're going to cancel the race because of that emergency landing. 
Airplanes are going to pull up off the course and land one by one. He's coming out. Taylor is out. He's, he's, out. Out. he's, he's, he's all right. Big hand, ladies and gentlemen. And Charlie is single-handedly pulling his airplane <laughs> off the race course as the other airplanes line up to land one by one. Some of the timing crew are moving over to see if they can assist Charlie. Let's talk to Charlie Terry and find out what happened. Well, we had had the day before we did a, uh, a little flyby for the cameras and stuff, and I was having some detonation problems. The engine was banging a little, and I landed it. And we did find a problem. We found an intake leak, and uh, thought we had it all fixed yesterday, but uh, it was running great till about the second lap, and it started to bang on me. I'm only sorry I didn't pull up about a half a lap sooner. By the time it went, I was running out of altitude and speed and ideas all at the same time. <laughs> so uh, I, I put it down on the runway, but I was... Uh, I was a little slow in it, about the last quarter of the turn it was stalled and just kind of parachuting down. I hit kind of hard. He told me the G-meter read over 10 Gs. It pins at 10 Gs, so. Well, uh, how do you feel? Oh, I'm fine, fine. I just got a couple little burn marks from the uh, shoulder harness. Thank God for the shoulder harness. They right. keep in good shape. The Great Texas National Aeration Air Show will be right back. Point .5 Video Productions present the United States Navy Flight Demonstration Team, the Blue Angel, performing in the FA-18 Hornet. You'll see breathtaking aerial maneuvers and incredibly fast action right on the deck by the hottest fighter in the Navy's arsenal. We'll talk with Lieutenant Commander Pat Walsh, the Blue Angels slot pilot, who gives us added insight to the Blue Angels and their aircraft. Don't miss this opportunity to see this thrilling performance of the world's greatest flight demonstration team again and again on home video. Call 1-800-752-9222 or you can order by mail. The most impressive Warbird Air Show in the world today is the annual event held at Harlingen, Texas, the home of the Confederate Air Force. The CAF Flying Museum has a 30-year tradition of restoring and bringing to the public not only the aircraft of America's proudest era, but the history surrounding the great air battles of World War II as well. In Air Show 87, the Wings of Victory, you'll see the famous Tora 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 Squadron flying a recreation of Japan's air raid on Pearl Harbor. You'll also see the Battle of Midway, the turning point of the war in the Pacific the daring bombing missions over the oil refineries at Ploesti, and the daylight bomb runs over Japan. In this exciting home video presentation, you'll not only see these vintage aircraft flying, but you'll go up in them as well for a pilot's eye view of the aerial action. If you'd like to enjoy this unique show again and again, call 1-800-752-9222, or you can order by mail. One of the most exciting acts on the air show circuit today is Captain Mike Brundage and his BD-5 Microjet, the world's smallest jet aircraft. of Mike's routine is his balloon pop. Let's watch as he charges the smoke-filled balloon at nearly 400 miles per hour. While we get ready for more racing, our producer Steve Palmer has a chance to speak with one of Air Racing's most notable advocates, Deke Slayton, one of the original seven Mercury astronauts and the commander of the Apollo Soyuz mission. Deke, I know that you have a lot of interest in air racing. Could you tell me uh, how you got involved in it? Well, when I got around retiring from NASA about five, six years ago, I had been flying government airplanes for 40 years, and I was looking around for something that I could afford that was a real challenge, and uh, I'd been to a couple of Formula One races, so that looked like a good good choice, and uh, so I bought a little Formula One racer, already been built, and a uh, good solid airplane, and I've been flying ever since. I, today's the first time I've flown the V. Do you think that there could be a, a, a big future for air racing here in Texas? Well, we think so. Actually, there have been a few races in Texas. Uh, one of the first ones I went to was down at San Marcos. Uh, 
guy down there has got a good racing airplane. In fact, we we have uh, three Formula One racers in Houston now and two over in the San Marcos, San Antonio area and uh, a couple more up in the Dallas area. So there's a pretty good batch of uh, Texas racing airplanes around for the formulas. Uh, the, the V's are pretty much concentrated in the eastern part of the country, it seems like. And uh, so I think this is as far west as I know of that there's been a Formula V race. We're ready to start racing, but we seem to be having a small problem clearing the runway. You see, there's been a fellow around here all day making a nuisance of himself trying to get an airplane ride, and quite frankly, we're afraid he may have had a little too much to drink. Now, they seem to have gotten the tailwheel stuck, and the pilot is trying to force it, but his inebriated passenger is at the controls. He's got a hold of the throttle. Right, grab a hold of the tail. Grab the airplane. Grab a hold of the tail. Get a tail on that thing. Somebody okay. from the Marsters, wave that guy off. Get him stopped or something. Now, okay, now catch him as he comes back by. I oh, see. Don't even run over you. <laughs> I saw that old boy drink six or seven beers, and I bet he had 20 well, before I that. Well, I'd kind of scared. Oh, don't look out. He's chasing Watch him it. now. Uh-oh. What's it? Uh-oh. Oh, he's got the tail up on you the table. You guys don't have Get out of the way. Oh, Lord, <laughs> ladies and Good. gentlemen. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. You you don't do that. Oh. You're seeing a drunk. Flying an airplane. I can't believe this. We ought to get, can we get the, get the security out there to chase him down? I don't he know. He said, you know, he told me when he was up here pestering us a while ago that he was a pilot, but I don't believe it. We didn't believe it then, I don't believe it now. We got the medical equipment standing by down there. I got a suggestion. Where's Randy? Let's get him up there and shoot him down. Well, we don't want to hurt that cub, though. Well, okay, that's he's, true. He's coming back Look around out. now. Good grief, he disappeared. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay. Oh! Oh! All right, easy now. Pull back easy. on the stick. Get back. back. Pull back. Now back on the throttle. The back on the throttle. Back on the throttle now. No, not the stick, you dummy. The throttle. Now, come on. Get the straight. My, get it straight. Ooh. My goodness. Come on. Now, get the nose back down. Back down. Back. Come on. Come on. Get the nose down. Get the wings level. Okay, okay. Now, now, now. Pull it easy. around. Easy does it. Now, there's Easy a runway right in front of you. That's a forgiving airplane, but it's I know not that it'll, forgiving. it'll forgive that old drunk. Oh, look out. Okay, now, back now, on the, the throttle. throttle. Not the stick, the throttle. Oh, he keeps pulling the throttle at the wrong time. We have a, we're trying now, to run. Now, get the throttle now. We're trying to run a national air race, and we got a drunk flying around in a J3 Cub. Come on, now. Look at it. Now, watch out. Is there some grass out there that he could land on? I don't know, but there's a lot of trees out there, and those there's are airplane-eating trees. a lot of trees, trees out there. Okay, now this now. time, this time he's going to do it. Now, come on. Come on. Easy, easy, easy. easy. On. Now you got one. On. Now get the other wheel down. Come on. You got one. Now the other. Now get them all three. Okay, come now. On. Now get the tail down. There you go. Go back on the throttle. Oh, man, that was close, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, we really don't need Now somebody like go out there and out get that guy out of that airplane. airplane. As you may have already guessed, the gentleman who's been flying the Piper Cub is no drunk. He's Charlie Jerrick, an instructor pilot from Dallas with over 30 years of experience. He's one of the best air show comedy acts around. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with the championship race. For sheer excitement, nothing beats the thrill of aerobatics, and the best of the best are in Airfare Addison. On this exciting home video presentation, you'll see the most thrilling air show aerobatics in the world today from vantage points that will put you right in the middle of the action. You'll see the aerial ballet of the International Council of Air Show's Performers of the Year, the French Connection. Hollywood stunt pilot Jim Franklin flying his highly modified Waco Jolly Roger in a hair-raising solo performance, and then with daredevil Johnny Kazian walking the wing. Jan Calmer performing crisp aerobatics right on the deck. The unparalleled grace of Steve Powell flying the sailplane, Miss Express. Craig Hosking in the airplane that will make you look twice. Double Take, the only aerobatic airplane that lands upside down. And world champion aerobatic pilot Leo Laudenschlager stretching the outside of the performance envelope in the Bud Light Laser 200. Leo says of this tape, this is the excitement, essence, and flavor of the world's greatest air show flying. To order, call 1-800-752-9222, or you can order by mail. We're ready now for the Formula V Championship race. The racers are already on the course, so let's rejoin Jim Velt with Bubba Welch and Ross Atkins. Bob King goes by in first position. Brian Dempsey second. John Brigar third. Rick Leonard's trying to pass. Looks like Rick may have taken over fourth position and pushed 
No, looks like um, Neil no, France wide. was inside. Yeah, but there was only five seconds between the first and the fifth aircraft. Now that's tight. Okay, on the back straightaway, Bob King is still holding first. Brian is holding second. John Bregar is still holding thing. Now we're gonna have a pass. Rick Leonard is diving. He's gonna get past Neil LaFrance on this turn. Now maybe he can cut in and consolidate his fourth place position. Bob King is flying a real good race for a first time race pilot. He's flying low and tight on those pylons and holding a lead, even though he's got faster airplanes behind him who are pushing him hard to get by. Brian Dempsey once again coming up on Bob King. Maybe he'll get by on this turn. Rick has picked up two seconds on that lap between he and the leader. Brian Dempsey has taken over the lead. Beautiful flying. Bob King is now second. John Bregar is in third. Rick Leonard is now diving and he's going to, looks like he's going to pass John Bregar on the straight. Neil LaFrance is back in fifth position. And looks like he's got him. We'll wingtip to wingtip. Yeah, yeah he, no, he slipped back. He's had to go high and wide, so looks like it's kept him out of third place. But watch him crank on it when he comes around on this straightaway right in front of us. Okay, Brian Dempsey has now pulled out a pretty good lead in first place in number 33, Chasing Rainbows. And we've got a mad scramble behind him as they try to try to move up. The other planes are battling to move up. Bob King is holding second. Rick, Rick has, has lost a lot of ground. Neil LaFrance is back up from fifth to third. John Breger is now down to fourth. Rick Leonard is still is, is in the back now and he's got superior altitude. Perhaps he'll dive down and pass here in a little bit. He's gonna have to go because he's six seconds behind the leader now. Brian Dempsey's now pulled out a pretty good lead as the other planes battle for position. John Bregar and Bob King are really having a tussle there for, for second and third. Oh, we got a whole bunch of them there the, from the second to the fourth, uh, fifth spot. Look at them. It looks like John Bregar has taken over second position. Boy, it's hard to tell. Oh, it looks like he's gonna let uh, Rick get in under him there. Well, I'll tell you, I've never seen him that tight. <laughs> well, they're battling for the money and the big prizes this time. Brian Dempsey goes by. Well in the lead at this point. John Bregar has taken over second. Rick Leonard passes. Passes down the straightaway. Let's see if he can hold it in the turn. Probably not. He's high and wide. All right. uh, he's now he, with that altitude, he'll be diving down. Rick Leonard is just in front of Bob King at this point. Let's see if Rick Leonard can dive down a bit, use that altitude to gain some speed, and go after Brian. The white flag is up. If Rick Leonard is going to win this race, he'd better get busy. He might have enough, but it doesn't look like it. But he's got one more lap to try it. That means he's going to have to pull it in on the uh, pylons pretty sharp. Somehow Brian found some extra speed in number 33. That oh. airplane has uh, been placing consistently about third all weekend. Brian Dempsey takes the white flag in the lead. Rick Leonard in second place is now moving oh, up moving fast. Up. He's got one lap to catch Brian.